So the presentation is an overview of my work as a PhD student, uh, which I'm focused on finding psoriatic arthritis specific risk factors. So during my talk, I'm going to give a little bit of background about, of, uh, about psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. The aim of my PhD, I will present the epidemiological part of my study, as well uh, as I will describe the genetic part and the methods that will be used. And finally, a bit of work that needs to be done in the following months. So as you all know, uh, psoriasis is an autoimmune chronic disease which affects the skin with an estimated global prevalence of 2 to 3 percent. Uh, it can manifest as various phenotypes. For example, you can see in picture A, we have psoriasis vulgaris, which is the most common uh, type. It is characterized by silvery scaly plaques, uh, which appear at the elbows, knees, scalp, and, and in the back. In the second picture, we have cutted psoriasis, which, is, um, which manifests as small tear-shaped uh, plaques. In the third picture, we have ins inverse psoriasis, which appears in the body folds uh, as uh, erythematous uh, papules, and usually there is no uh, uh, presence of sca any scales. And the fourth picture, this is the most severe and rare form of psoriasis, which is the erythodermic one. Uh, which covers usually 90% of the body. The fifth picture is pustular uh, psoriasis. It was considered to be a form of psoriasis. However, recent genetic evidence have proved that it is a separate condition. Psoriasis can, only, uh, can as well affect the joints, leading to a specific type of arthritis called psoriatic arthritis. PSA has a prevalence in patients with psoriasis among 14% in the UK, and with a population prevalence of 0.3 to 1%. It is a heterogeneous disease with symptoms including nail picking, uh, the uh, swollen digit that has the appearance of, the, uh, of a sausage, and it's called dactylitis. There is also enthesitis, which is the inflammation of the tendons, the ligaments, and the joint insertions. And finally, there is peripheral arthritis that appears in the peripheral joints of the body. So besides the skin and joint involvement, both diseases are systemic, so they are associated with the presence of at least one uh, additional morbidity. The most prevalent comorbidities in both diseases are the cardiovascular diseases, metabolic syndrome, which includes hypertension and high cholesterol, diabetes, bowel syndrome, and depression. So the cardiovascular diseases are the most prevalent comorbidities in both psoriasis and BSA. There have been various studies uh, trying to compare the prevalence of CVDs in both uh, PSA and psoriasis. So there is a belief that uh, cardiovascular diseases are more prevalent in patients with PSA, probably because of the extra inflammation that, uh, that PSA patients have that leads to an accelerated atherosclerosis, which is where the arteries become clogged from fat sometimes called plugs. Uh, for example, in his study, Husted has proven that hypertension is significantly increased in PSA compared to psoriasis patients who don't have arthritis. In addition, there have been uh, reported increased rates of chronic pain and fatigue in patients with PSA compared to patients with psoriasis, to, uh, compared to the control, sorry. The problem here is that the majority of studies usually compare the prevalence of comorbidities either between the two diseases or between one disease and the healthy controls. So you cannot be sure whether the prevalence of a comorbidity in PSA, it is because it's because of the presence of psoriasis or bef uh, because of the increased inflammation that this patient have. So we will address uh, this uh, specific point in our study that we'll, I will describe later. Both, both diseases are complex diseases, which mean that they are influenced by the patient's genetic predisposition and the impact on environmental and lifestyle factors. The term liability is used to describe the overall genetic and environmental factors that contribute to the onset of a disease. For a, 
uh, liability is, excuse me, uh, it is normally distributed and it has this bell shaped form. So whenever a patient gathers enough liability and reaches this threshold point, the disease will be uh, developed. Regarding the environmental factors, there have been a few studies trying to find which, are, which contribute to the development of both diseases. However, uh, the results usually are conflicted, potentially because of the small sample sizes that these studies have and don't give us the enough power to find significant results. So the lifestyle factors that uh, probably contribute to both diseases are obesity, smoking and alcohol consumption, stress, trauma, and infections. So it has been proven that both diseases have a strong genetic component. Uh, however, aggregation, aggregation studies have shown that PSA has a heavier genetic burden. These uh, familial aggregation studies uh, determine whether having diseased relatives increases someone's likelihood of developing the specific disease. Uh, as we can see in this table, PSA has the largest sibling recurrence risk ratio compared to the other autoimmune diseases and psoriasis. This suggests that there are, PSA, uh, there are regions in the genome that contribute to the development of, of PSA and not to psoriasis. Before moving to the genetic part, I, I think it would be useful to describe the terms and methods used in genetic epidemiology in order to investigate which genetic factors are associated with the disease. So, as you know, DNA is the molecule that contains the genetic code of the organisms and it is inherited by our parents. It is in every cell and it tells them which proteins to make. It has this, uh, this double-stranded helix form, which looks like a ladder twisted into a spiral. Each step of the ladder consists of two nucleotide bases, which are the adenine A and the thymine T, uh, cytosine C and guanine G. So A can only match with T and C can only match with G. The term single nucleotide polymorphism is a very important term in genetic epidemiology and it is the variation of the bases in a specific, uh, in the specific position in the genome which a frequency of appearance is more than 1% in a defined population. For example, in a defined population, the majority of patients at this specific position have the base C. However, a minority of them at the specific position have the base A. That means that there is a single nucleotide polymorphism at this specific position, and these base variations are the alleles of the SNP. There are other uh, variations in the genome. However, in our study, uh, we are going to work only with SNPs. So a method that investigates which of those SNPs uh, are uh, increasing the likelihood of developing a disease is called genome-wide association study. The, the most common design used in those studies is the case control design, where we have a group of controls, which are the uh, group of people that don't have the disease that we want to investigate, and then the disease cases control, which are the individuals who have the disease. So for all those individuals, we genotype uh, their genome uh, for all the known SNPs, which means that for each SNP, we learn which two bases each person has. So after that, we, uh, for each SNP, we try to investigate whether the allele frequencies are significantly different in between the, those two uh, cohorts. Significantly in statistics means that this relationship between P, uh, the SNP and the disease uh, happens for a reason, uh, for a cause other than random chance. So it's not because of chance. So after that, 
we use this plot, which is called the Manhattan plot, and the SNPs that are significantly associated with the disease are usually stand out in the plot, and they appear as a stack of points. After that, in order to, we need to replicate our results, and we uh, use another uh, cohorts which are independent of the first ones. So by 2016, there have been 27 psoriasis susceptibility genes that have been identified in both white and Chinese population, elucidating the SNPs that are the line, the pathways that uh, are, cause the pathogenesis of psoriasis. The majority of SNPs fell into immune-related pathways and the skin barrier function. And the most significant genes appear in the major histocompatibility complex, the MHC, which is a group of genes which code for proteins who help the immune system uh, to distinguish the, uh, the foreign substances in the organism. So the strongest association is with the LHC06, which helps with the antigen presentation in the T lymphocytes. And outside this complex, there have been many diseases found. Some of them are these ones. In the case of psoriasis, there have been a limited genetic research compared to the other types of arthritis, including rheumatoid arthritis. This is because there have been difficulty to establish classification criteria for psoriasis. However, now the CASPAR criteria used. In addition, we have low sample sizes, so the, this doesn't give us the power statistically to find significant results. And finally, PSA has a complicated genetic and clinical overlap with psoriasis and inflammatory arthritis. The majority of SNPs that have been found to be associated with PSA are common with psoriasis. However, uh, the existence of these four, which are PSA specific, and they are not associated with psoriasis, supports our thought that PSA has a heavier genetic burden compared to psoriasis. So the aim of my PhD was to identify these PSA specific risk factors that give us, uh, would enable us to detect those patients who are increased risk of developing PSA. Specifically, I want to find this genetic, uh, environmental, and uh, lifestyle factors that would um, in, uh, find which patients are going to develop PSA and try to see if I can create a statistical model that could predict those appearances in psoriasis uh, patients. In addition, uh, I would like to find out whether the prevalent comorbidities in both diseases uh, contribute to the reduced quality of life that patients with PSA ha uh, have. So for the epidemiological part of my study, we used data from the UK Biobank, which I'm going to describe in the next slide, and we aimed to, to assess the environmental and lifestyle factors that are associated with the prevalence of PSA and psoriasis without arthritis. In addition, we wanted to investigate the association between those diseases and the comorbidities. And the comorbidities. So the UK Biobank is a British uh, health registry which contains data from half a million people aged 37 to 73 years old from across the UK which were registered to a general practitioner. During the assessment visit, the participants had to keep information about any medical conditions that have been diagnosed by a physician, the medication, they, the medication that were described at, this, uh, at the exact time in the past, the demographics info, information, and some lifestyle habits. The design that we used for our study is a cross-sectional one, which means that we compare uh, groups uh, of population in a specific and single point in time, which means that we cannot consider what has happened before or after that. For example, we cannot be sure whether someone who has cardiovascular disease developed this disease before developing PSA or after. So these studies are used not to 
um, to find the causality, but to give associations which comorbidities or environmental factors are associated with the disease. So the lifestyle factors that were included in the analysis were found during the touch screen questionnaire that participants uh, had to fill, and they are the Townsend Deprivation Index, which is an index about the deprivation of the area that the participants live, currently live, the BMI, smoking status, the alcohol frequency consumption, and physical trauma or injury. In the, in the comorbidities, we included some f cardiovascular ones, a heart attack, angina, and stroke, a metabolic syndrome, which is hypertension and high cholesterol. We checked about diabetes, liver, gastrointestinal, and pulmonary disease, chronic depression, and finally fatigue and chronic pain. We used descriptive statistics in order to summarize the baseline characteristics of the participants in the three cohorts. Uh, the lifestyle factors, the, uh, the association of the lifestyle factors with the three these uh, cohorts that we compared, which I forgot to, to mention which they are. So we took a psoriasis cohort, which included the, pay the participants in the UK Biobank who reported having psoriasis, but without any type of arthritis. So, so it was a clear psoriasis cohort. Then we took a, a PSA cohort with the participants who had PSA, and finally the, the rest UK Biobank population who didn't have psoriasis or PSA uh, created the control cohort. So we used logistic recreation to compare the prevalence of the, these environmental factors in these three cohorts. In the first step, the, in the adjusted analysis, we created models for each lifestyle factor, using as an outcome the disease status, and we adjusted for age, gender, and ethnicity. And those environmental factors that found to be significant in this step, we, uh, they were included in a final multivariate model in which we adjusted for the same variables again. Uh, in order to analyze the prevalence of comorbidities in th the three cohorts, we used logistic, uh, multivariate logistic recreation and we had as an outcome the comorbidity status, whether they had, for example, depression or not. And we adjusted for age, gender, the deprivation index, ethnicity, smoking and alcohol consumption, and BMI. These are the variables that probably affect both the outcome, for example, having uh, depression and uh, having psoriasis PSA. In this table, we can see that 0.2% of the population of the UK Biobank reported having PSA, and 1% uh, reported having psoriasis with, without arthritis, which is, in, in uh, which is in line of what we would expect. The median age of the three cohorts were quite the same. However, there is a significantly higher proportion of participants who had psoriasis, and they were males compared to the controls. In addition, a significantly higher proportion of PSA uh, patients and psoriasis without arthritis patients had a wide background compared to the controls as well. This table shows the comparison of the lifestyle factors between the three cohorts. The OR means the odds, the odds ratio, which is the, the odds of having a disease uh, under a certain exposure compared to, to the odds of this disease occurring without this exposure. So when we have an OR over one, means that there is increased odds of this disease under the specific exposure. The numbers in the square packets is the 95% confidence interval, which is a measurement tool used, that we use to see how precise the OR is, and it is like a proxy to see if the result is significant. So if the rate does not include one, means that the result is significant. As we can see, BMI was associated with an increased odds of PSA compared to psoriasis without arthritis. However, 
the smoking status and alcohol consumption status uh, was associated with decreased odds of PSA compared to psoriasis. At this point, I would like to talk about this relationship between smoking and PSA. We can see in this column, which is the psoriasis patients versus the controls, that the, the smoke, smoking status compared to the controls is a risk factor. The same happens with PSA when we compare it with the controls. However, if we look at that, we can see that smoking appears to be protective of PSA in the psoriasis uh, patients. This is a paradox that happens because, uh, because of selection biases. There are specific type called the index event biases, which happen in statistics where you try to analyze in a specific sub that has psoriasis, and it uses this spurious association. Uh, in the uh, this table, the final table presents the prevalence of comorbidities in the three groups. As we can see, patients with PSA were more likely to report having fatigue in the last two weeks, chronic pain and hypertension, as well as liver disease compared to the psoriasis patients without arthritis. In the case of chronic pain and hypertension, we can see that both diseases are prevalent when we compare PSA with controls, but they are not prevalent when we compare psoriasis with controls, which probably means that the prevalence here, it is because of the increased inflammation that PSA patients uh, have, and not because of the, appear of the concomitant psoriasis. When we compare the psoriasis with the controls, psoriatic patients were more likely to report having diabetes, either type 1 or type 2, chronic dep depression, and gastrointestinal disease. And finally, PSA patients were more likely to report having angina compared to the healthy population. The strength of this study was the large sample sizes used and the fact that we reported the comorbidities in a consistent way. However, because the data were self-reported, that means that there was an increased likelihood of misclassification. And in addition, because the study design was a cross-sectional study, and as I said, uh, you compare the groups in a specific time in the past, it is impossible to infer causality, and you can only check up for associations. And in addition, it is prone to biases, as the smoking uh, PSA bias that I described before. So in conclusion, PSA patients were more likely to be obese compared to the psoriasis-only patients. In addition, hypertension, chronic pain, fatigue, and liver disease were more frequent in patients with PSA compared to psoriasis. Now, for the genetics part of my study, which is in progress, we use this, a cross phenotype GWAS where we compare <coughs> both disease groups with the healthy population and then these, these disease groups to, an, uh, to each other in order to find which, which SNPs are specific to PSA or common in both diseases. In addition, there will be used as a specific technique in statistic called conditional um, FDR, uh, in which we taking advantage of the existing uh, of genetic overlap that uh, exists between PSA and other autoimmune diseases like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis, in order to gain mon more power to find novel variables, uh, variants that are associated with PSA. And for a future work, I would like to create a statistical model which will incorporate all the known genetic and environmental factors and to see it's the predictive potential that can give in order to find which psoriasis patients are in increased risk of developing PSA. I would like to thank all my supervisors, my co-authors in the UK Biobank. I would like to thank the participants and all the staff working for UK Biobank and especially Psoriasis Association for funding me and
Thank you. <laughs>